she calls her friends and neighbors to the Lord, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Verse 10, Jesus again says, Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. We are familiar with the, the parables of Jesus. Are you here? Hello? Amen. Amen. Come on, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when you carefully study about the parables of Jesus, the parables of Jesus are basically classified into two sects. The first one, you know, are objective, the second one are relative. The objectives, the parables which are objective or classified as objectives are the uh, are the, 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 the real ones that have already happened. Now Jesus says, there was a man, there was a certain man who had two sons. There was a rich man. So he speaks about incidents that have happened which are objective and the relative one are the one Jesus relate to the incidents that used to happen but not pointing out to a particular one that has happened. Suppose a woman having ten silver coins. But the third one Jesus said, there are three parables. If you look, if you go through chapter 15, uh, it is actually the ch chapter 15 in the book of Luke, it is a chapter of losses. You know, there are three parables. The first one Jesus said, suppose a man who had ten hundred ships, and if he loses one of them, he will leave the whole ninety-nine in the wilderness, and he will set to look for the lost until he finds it. But the beauty of these all these three parables, it begins with the losses, but it ends up with restoration. The second one Jesus speaks about a woman who had ten silver coins. I'll come back to it, the mystery behind it later. And the third one, Jesus says, there was a certain man who had two sons. He speaks about an incident that had already happened. But the other two are the, you know, are what you call the, the relative, related ones, which means parables that used to happen. Uh, can be hundred ships, can be two hundred. But the, 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 the most uh, significant part of that parable concerning the lost one that used to happen, not pointing out to something that had already happened, uh, but he speaks concerning the incident that normally used to happen. Now coming to the second paradise for a while to our meditation, I won't be too long, nor will I be too hard. Um, the second one, Jesus said, or oh, one woman, or suppose a woman, who had ten silver coins. And Jesus says, it speaks about in case if she loses one of them, if she loses one of them, she will light the lamp, close the whole house, light the lamp, and sweep the whole house carefully until she finds the missing one. When she has found it, or when she had found it, she will call her friends and neighbors together, and she will tell them, you know, rejoice with me for I have found the one that was missing. You know, uh, when you think about the value of the coin, there is nothing to be exaggerated about what you call whether she lost or found. But there is a reason, there is a cause that Jesus mentioned about. It's not based on just the value, the physical value of the coin. It's all about the value of its attribution. According to the system of Jews' marriage, you know, this is all Jesus speaks as an attribution to the, the, the system of Jews, Jewish culture in their marriage. There are three as you know, steps of that marriage. Normally, and according to the Jewish culture, there are three steps of their marriage. The first one is the engagement, the second one is a betrothal ceremony, and the third one is the wedding, which we call. You know, some who are already done, some who are eagerly waiting for, which we call the marriage. And here Jesus speaks about this parable related to the uh, attributed to the second part of their marriage, which is called the betrothal. 
Engagement is still separable. Engagement can be revoked. But here Jesus speaks about betrothal service, which means, you know, uh, uh, between the engagement and the betrothal and the marriage, there used to be a long duration. Engagement can take place, you know, in a certain time and followed by the betrothal. But between the betrothal and the marriage, there used to be a longer period. Sometimes uh, it takes about one year, two years of time, three years of time. In the engagement time, it's just merely a sign that they are going to get married. However, it can be still withdrawn. It can be still revoked because the marriage has not yet taken place. However, the second one is very crucial and very important. Uh, Jesus speaks about you know, the, the, the ten silver coins. During the time of the betrothal ceremony, documentally they are one, which means once the betrothal ceremony takes place, it is endorsed as an inseparable relationship. Which means they do not come together to live together. However, documentally they are one. And both Joseph, the stepfather of Jesus, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, were betrothed. Hallelujah. They had already crossed the engagement. They had already come to the betrothal, which means they were you know, they were documentally united with their inseparable relationship. That's why the Bible says, when Joseph came to know that Mary was already conceived, he 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 intended, he thoroughly decided, determined to divorce her. Which means, once the betrothal ceremony is violated, betrothal is violated or revoked, it is not as divorce. Now, at the time of the marriage of the Jews, I mean, the time of the betrothal. Uh, the, the proposed uh, husband or the bride the bridegroom will offer uh, to the bride with a token of marriage. The groom will give something as a treasure, as an identity to the bride that you belong to me from now on. However, they have not yet come together to live together, but in case, because she is still uh, proved to be a virgin and whenever this bride happens to go outside of the of her home she must uh, use where this token of marriage which is uh, which is as uh, which is used as an adornment upon her head as a sign as a symbol as an identity that anyone who looks at this woman or this virgin should not desire her to see this identity they must observe, they must realize, understand that uh, she has already been betrothed to somebody. Now that is a good part of the tradition, but I'm just going to expound about the dangerous part of the tradition. The good part is that she will, you know, this, at the time of the betrothal ceremony, the groom will offer, groom will hand over the token of the marriage to the, to the, to the bride, to his bride, because since there's going to be still a longer time they need to wait till they come together. However, she will remain bound to this man. So she must wear this identity of her group, of her husband, of the proposed husband, until they come together through the marriage. So this is used as, a, as an identity. So whenever she goes outside, she will pick it up and place it upon her head as an adornment. So anyone who looks at that, so you can see among the, the traditional Jews, the Orthodox Jews, they still have the same custom they follow it. And whenever she goes outside, she will fix it upon her hair. And, and anyone who happened to see her, they will observe that, oh, she has already been betrothed. Now, that, that's a good part. But the dangerous part is, let me, you know, before coming to the dangerous part, let me just explain a little more. Now, until, and, and you know, when the marriage ceremony takes place, and at the time of the marriage, uh, she has to return the whole, these silver coins, which have been given to, in respect of the number, but it could be 10 or 20, what normally they used to be 10. But at the time of the marriage, this bride, the wife, she should return all these 
uh, silver coins, which is this, which is given to her as a, which was given to her as an identity, she must return to her husband. Because behold, now we are no more living separate. We are coming together. So I don't need to wear the identity of the husband. Now you yourself is my identity. Hello. So I don't need to wear it again. And she will return to her husband. That behold, you gave me all these coins to be worn as an identity that I belong to you. Now, since we are together, we are going to live together. Please take it back. And that's the, the manner of the marriage, you know, how they conduct. However, in case if she fails to provide in the exact number of these coins back to, the, to her husband, it is traditionally believed, according to the mythology, they believe that she's not supposed to lose it because this is the identity that, first of all, she belongs to someone. Secondly, she is a virgin. In case, if she fails to uh, return to her husband, it is traditionally understood that she has lost her virginity in, the, in between the course of the betrothal and the marriage. And therefore, the husbands of the group has the full right to divorce this woman. So, this is an identity that she belongs to someone and it is, it, it is an identity of the virginity of a woman. Now, Jesus says, you know, you know, in a woman who had ten silver coins in Gales, if she loses one of them, this is all about something that happens during the time of betrothal, certain betrothal time, praise God. In Gales, she Jesus says, if she loses one of the coins, she will she will not disclose to her neighborhood because she knows it will it will have a lot of bad effects, you know, it will have its own consequences. If anyone comes, know that she lost one of the coins, which means they will observe that oh she must have lost her virginity. She is going to be divorced, which means she is going to become like a spectacle in the in the sight of the public and she will remain the whole life as a spectacle, as a you know, as a as a as a as a person who lost her identity, lost her virginity, she will be remarked with a negative uh, identity among the public. That's why she will not disclose to the public or her to her friends or neighbors as soon as she loses this coin. However, she will close the house, light the lamp. She knows the cost of missing it. Hallelujah. She knows how much it is going to cost her life. Therefore, she will close the house, she will light the lamp, and she will sweep the whole house until she finds it. And once she had found, she will call her friends and neighbors, please, you know, I have lost this coin, but I have found it. And those, you know, the what you call her friends and colleagues and the neighbors, they know the tune of this message and they will rejoice with her. Otherwise, it would have forfeited her whole future into a water drop. Hallelujah. And the people who get this message, people who hear to this situation, to her message, they know how joyful this moment is. And Jesus says, that much is the great joy when a sinner repents. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's all about, Jesus speaks about, you know, there's nothing that, that is lost, there's nothing that are lost that cannot be found in our spiritual life. But when you go to chapter 14, the last part Jesus says, salt is good, however, if it loses its uh, savor, its flavor, it cannot be, it cannot be, if it loses its season, flavor, it cannot be recycled, it cannot be restored. However, Jesus says, you know, um, 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 a sheep that is lost could be found. A coin that is lost could be found. And a son who is lost could be even still found. However, the spirituality, the spiritual essence of our life, we must preserve without losing it. Because in case, if you lost that, uh, the, 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 the spiritual essence in your personal life, it is very really hard to be restored. Hallelujah. However, Jesus reassures that in case, you know, here uh, Jesus speaks about uh, 
uh, what we call the lost sheep, which is a which is a will, which is an attribution of the will that is lost could be found. Now here Jesus speaks about the lost coin, which is all about the identity. It could be still restored, and Jesus speaks about the son who is lost and even the returns could be still restored. Son is all about the return of his father. Hello. The, the sheep is all about the, 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 the wealth of a person and the coin is all about the identity of a person. If you have lost your wealth, it can be redeemed, it can be restored. If you lost your identity, it can be restored. If you lost your inheritance, it can be still restored, provided if you look back unto God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, you know, the Lord had been speaking to me out of this passage for last couple of months concerning what are laws, what can be restored. Of God, according to the book of uh, Psalm 68, verses 19 and 20, the Bible says, Of God is a God of restoration. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our God is a God of restoration. Which means, when you go to the book of Second Kings chapter 6, the Bible speaks about a beautiful incident that had happened. When you go to chapter 6, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is chapter 6, Second Kings, speaks about the servants, you know, the, the disciples of prophet Elisha, they said, Master, uh, you know, the house that we dwell in, it is too narrow and too congested. Please allow us that we should go to the forest of the, you know, the, by the bank of the river of Jordan where we can, we can cut the, you know, what you call the trees and uh, expand our homes because it is too narrow for us. And he allowed them. However, they insisted that he should accompany them. The Bible says he went along with them. And they were cutting the trees, cutting down the trees by the, you know, in the forest by the river of Jordan. However, there was a, the, one of the servants who was cutting the trees. Suddenly, he lost his axe into the waters. And he cried out. And he came back to the master saying that, Master, alas, I lost the axe. Because it was not mine, it was borrowed. And he asked him, he didn't ask him, why did he lose it? He could have carefully cut the trees. He didn't blame you for that. He said, just asked him. I love the way how Elisha asked. He asked him, where have you lost it? Yeah. Oh, where have you lost it? He didn't ask, how did you lose? He asked, where have you lost it? And he pointed out the place, sir, this is where I lost it. And the Bible says, he cut a branch of a tree and just stretched it towards that particular area. And the Bible says he made the axe swim in the water. He said, go and pick it up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, there is a great message in this incident. Hallelujah. Praise God. The so first of all, you must acknowledge, hallelujah, praise God, how, you know, where you have lost it and what you have lost it. You mean self-acceptance. Praise God. If you are willing to accept, the Lord is able to bring it back. Have you lost the essence of your spiritual life in the past, in 2014? Have you lost those days of your valuable, precious times of prayer moments with God? Have you lost the spiritual standard of your personal life? Have you lost the moral standard of your life? Our God is able to bring it back, provided if you are willing to accept and if you are willing to admit before God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I, I know this is what the message I preached uh, according to Matthew chapter 2 at last time. Uh, Truly sweet, he will not break. You may not remember. And a smoking flax, he will not extinguish. Hallelujah. It is all about a broken reed. Broken reed is all about, a bruised reed is all about the musical instruments which are used by the musicians during the time of the synagogue of the Jews. You know, uh, and and the, the, the musical instruments which are made uh, out of the reed are the most inexpensive one. However, in the course of time, in case if it has become bruised, in the course of usages, if it has become broken or bruised, uh, no musician will try to restore it. It's very hard to restore, and and it does. You know, it doesn't cost him to get another one. That's why he will break them into pieces and throw them into the garbages. But the Bible says, according to the book of Psalms 113, verses 5 and 6, it says, He lifts up the poor out of the dust, raises the needy out of the ash heap. Ash heap is all about garbage. Garbage is something like 
you know, in we are all familiar with the terminology and the, 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 the thing called garbage. We all have the garbages in our home. You know, those things which have become, which were useful, but in the course of time we can use this, we will throw them into the garbage. Hallelujah. Anything that has become useless, we will never preserve it, but we will rather throw them into the garbages. But the Bible says, he will raise the poor out of the dust, and he raises the needy out of the ashes, which means he is able to bring back, he is the, Jesus is the lifter of the garbages. He is a restorer, he is a God of restoration of the garbages, which means garbages, you will find all kinds of useless items, but he did not begin as useless it was useful before but in the course of time it became useless any product that you buy from the world it has got an expiry mark any expensive medicine that you buy from the pharmacy you see it has got an expiry date no one dare to use anything that has expired which means doesn't matter how over expensive those medicines are, how over expensive those you know foodstuffs are. Once it crosses its expiry date, we will throw them into the garbage. But the Bible speaks of according to Psalms 1 and 13, it is a messianic psalm concerning the forthcoming Messiah. And the Bible says when the Messiah comes, he will not break the the broken reeds as men do, rather he will restore the broken one. Hallelujah. Are you a broken reed this morning? Are you a person, are you, uh, you know, uh, a lost coin this morning? Are you the one who lost your spiritual standard of your life? Have you lost the moral standard of your personal life? Have you lost, I mean, have you become like a, you know, a garbage in the sight of others? Are you a person who who is considered as useless in the sight of others. Do men call you, have ever, uh, have anyone ever called you as you are useless and good for nothing? Remember, Jesus is able to restore us, he is able to bring us back, which means, hallelujah, praise God. Anything that are thrown into the, anything that are past the expiry day, uh, and men will throw them, in respect of how much he paid as a cause, he will throw them into the garbage. But when the Bible says he is the lifter of the garbage, which means he is able to give an extension of life. Which means the Bible says, according to John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, I have come that you may have life, that you will get rid of expiry date. You will come out of expiry date. You will have life, life in abundance. Amen. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Are you a broken one this morning? I'm not going to be too long. I'm just going to cut short in just 30 seconds of time. Are you a broken one this morning? Hallelujah. Do you think that you're good for nothing? Do you think that you're useless? Do you think that you're untalented and incapable and uh, you know you do not have any aptitude and you cannot be used? And you might think that how can God use me? I'm a person like any useless person like me. But remember, if you are willing to acknowledge yourself, if you think that you lost something in the course of life, the course of time in the past life, hallelujah, praise God. Just like the, the servant, the disciple of Elisha, who lost his eyes and he admitted he was more conscious, he became more aware about it because it was not his own, but it was borrowed. Remember, hallelujah, whatever we have, it is freely given by God. Hallelujah. Nothing is our own. It is all merely, it is all given as a gift from God. And remember, we are there to take, we are there, we are chosen by God to look after what has been delegated upon our life. He became conscious, self-conscious about what he lost. Secondly, he, where he lost it. That's why he said, Master, I lost it. You see in the life of Samson, when you go to the book of uh, Judges chapter 16, you see from the very beginning of the time of the election of Samson, he preferred to be with the wrong association. He preferred to have a wrong, uh, you know, in association with the wrong person. And you see, eventually he was, he was tempted, he was instigated to leak out, to, to unfold the secret of his power. Although, you know, the wrong person tried to tempt him to get uh, hold of the secret of his power. However, she continued to take control over him. In the meantime, he was forced, deeply tempted, 
to, to disclose, to unfold, unveil the secrets of his power. And you see, it was, first of all, he preferred to be in a wrong association. Secondly, he unfolded the secret of his power to the wrong person, which was to the enemy, who was the agent of his enemy. And you see, eventually he lost his power. He lost the secret of his power. Consequently, he lost his power. What happened? He was dwindled into just like a normal man, just like other ordinary people. When he was chained, they removed his hair, the seven braids of hairs. And he was, thus he, as a sign that he lost his power, he was chained. And he, they, they, they broke his eyes and they destroyed his eyes. He lost his power. He lost his eyesight. He has been chained. He became a slave. And the Bible says he was taken into the, what you call, into the, by the Philistines. And they, they placed him in the jail. And they wanted, they were in a great merry. They were in a great joy. They wanted to celebrate the victory of their lifetime enemy called Samson. And they, they wanted to make sure that he would come and dance for them, for the, the, the God of Dagon. And the Bible says a little lad, a boy who was, you know, controlling this Samson, the man who shook the whole nation, probably one of the most powerful anointed in the whole Bible who was used mightily by God, now had been dwindled, low graded, downgraded into a situation where he became powerless, sightless, and now a little lad could control him. Hallelujah. Now he he was arrested with chain hands, he was brought in a, a, among those who people who were celebrating their victory over Samson and they insisted that he should dance. But I love the way how he prayed. Although he lost his power, he had no eyes, but he prayed, Lord, remember me one more time. Hallelujah. The Bible says he remembered the Lord remembered. Power was restored. And you see, he was able to destroy more number of enemies than during the time of his rest of the ministration. Hallelujah. Which means there is nothing that a loss cannot be restored, provided if you're willing to accept if you have lost, secondly, where you have lost it. Praise God. Are you a broken one? Are you a lost coin this morning? Are you uh, just like a broken reed this morning? Are you willing to admit that uh, what uh, you know that uh, what what happened in your life? Those days of you know the precious moments being used to be spent in the presence of God. Those days of your precious prayer time moments and the time close walk with God. Have you lost it in the course of time? The course of busy days, busy activities and affairs. Hallelujah. Let's come back to the Lord. I can guarantee you on the basis of the word of God. Hallelujah. Your life will never be the same. Yes. Hallelujah. He's a lifter of the garbage. He's able to extend the life. He's able to remove the expiry day. He's able to heal. He's able to restore. Shall we close our eyes? Thank you, Jesus. Our Father in heaven. We come before this beautiful day before thy throne of grace. We thank you. We acknowledge that who you are. Once again, we thank you for what you have chosen us for. We thank you for the purpose that you have chosen us for. The purpose that you have elected us for. The purpose that you have planted us in your kingdom. I pray that, Lord, you will continue to expand the, the limitation. You will remove those limitations of this fellowship. But you will bring an expansion that many souls be added to your kingdom through their life. May each souls who are broken here this morning be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are counted as useless, those who are those who count themselves as good for nothing, who who are broken like a broken reed, bruised reed, who are waiting for a chance but never see an opportunity. Pray that Lord, you will heal them, restore them. May new opportunities, may new avenues, revenues be unleashed upon their life and into their life. We give you the praise, Jesus. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much.